Hello and welcome. I'm delighted to introduce you to Minister Mohamed Ibrahim, who is Minister of Postal Tel Telecommunications in Somalia, uh, and who is here to inform us about the role of smart technologies in the fast track to rebuild the governmental institutions and uh, uh, infrastructures in a country. Uh, how is your vision about the role of technologies in this context? We, we decided early on when we looked at our situation that the only way we can rebuild our country is using technology. The reason is very simple. After 23 years of basically no functioning government and destroying all our infrastructure, there's no way we can do things based on business as usual. So somehow we have to find a smarter way, innovative way, ways that we can fast track things. So all the ideas we are following, all the projects we are trying to implement, our focus is on, is on technology. We are saying how can we use smart technology to fast track this, whether it's telecommunication, post, financial, any sector. And what specific technologies or infrastructures are supporting this uh, re-establishment of the institutions? Is it uh, identities? Is it, um, I don't know, broadband communication? Wh what are the, the, the key elements that the government is investing in right now? There are many, but I can even use the, the two you mentioned. For example, the ID area. One of the issues we have in Somalia is identifying people. Uh, we lost a lot of records, we lost a lot of the civic stuff. So we are now introducing a smart ID where we can figure out who is the person, where they were born, and all the other details. But also adding more information, having a chip that you can record the fingerprints, adding more data and so on. We're also going beyond that. We're actually trying to do things that are a bit more innovative. For example, on the ID card, the national ID card, which is to be used for the 2016 election, it's not only to identify the person or the citizen, the Somali citizen, but also to give them some ideas about technology. And I'll just mention two of them. One is we want to give them, for example, an email at the back of the card. This is unique. You don't see ID cards with emails. And you might be asking yourself, but if it's a low penetration in terms of the technology use in Somalia, why do people want email accounts in their ID cards? Because we're thinking ahead, we're visionaries, we're looking at 20, 30, 40 years ahead. And we're saying at some stage, the Somali citizen will have access to the internet, they will be needing an email. So if I'm Mohammed Ibrahim, I will have, for example, Mohammed Ibrahim at post.gov.so. It might cost us some money, but, but we'll think ahead. The other one which is more interesting is even the ID number. We're trying to explore ways where we can be, again, a bit more creative. And I'll give you an idea. For example, we want to use an ID number based on IP address. This might be a bit science fiction, but we want to do it. Why? Because again, we're thinking ahead, and with the IP version 6, there's so many digits. We can take some of them, or even all of them, if possible, and based on that given ID number, why are we doing it? Because again, we're thinking ahead, we know our citizens at some stage in the future will have access to the internet, and if they have their laptops, iPads, or mobile phones, they will need an IP address, and that IP address is already on their card. The intelligence community will be probably excited about this. They can then track people and what have you, but we are also security conscious. We want to make sure people using the technology are doing the right thing. Not because we want to censor or we want to track people, but we've been through 20 plus years of violence, so we want to make sure things are peaceful and people use the technology for peaceful purposes. So it seems that the Somalian government is really very visionary and is uh, looking very much in the future to establish a digital society mm. while rebuilding. Mm. This is very interesting. Mm. And how much time do you think that the next milestones will be reached? Uh, the things that are happening, you see, we, we're actually very modest uh, because in a way we're a bit embarrassed because we decided to destroy our country and now we're rebuilding. So we don't talk too much about this. But we are doing interesting things. For example, there's a fiber landing in Mogadishu. So very soon, people will be able to access the internet a bit faster than before. We're still using the satellites, but that will become a backup in case the fiber breaks down or so on. And there'll be more of that. The universities, for example, we are allowing all Somali tertiary students to have a free email based on their .edu.so. 
Why we're doing this? Because we'd encourage them to go online and so on. We encourage you all Somali tertiary students to have domain names. We will give them for free. The government is giving them free domain. Again, you might say, well, why give free domains? Because we want to excite them. We want to ignite their creativity. We want them to put their own content, whatever it is. It could be their friends' photos, their assignments, whatever. So we are doing things like this. And the idea is to generate some excitement, to give the students and the general public ways they can get into the internet, either from through the fiber, which will be a bit faster, or giving them content or, or other accesses like emails or domain names and so on. So we're trying. We're doing a few ideas. It is absolutely fascinating. I'm mm. really interested in this um, opportunity to motivate a population mm. Mm. by providing things that will become very appealing to mm. them and that will contribute once again to social and economic development mm. in Somalia. Mm. So. Uh, of course, we wish you very much all the best in pursuing these objectives, and thank you for being with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much.